And so that balance of being able to address infectious disease outbreaks, planning for disasters, responding to, to pandemics, uh, being able to anticipate and work around the preventive factors around chronic disease, uh, the social determinants of health, uh, prevention of injury, all of that is the breadth of public health. It's not just what we do in public health, but what we influence that matters. And public health is not simply the programs and services we offer, but a way of thinking about health, a way of thinking about function that allows the society at large to be more healthy rather than not. It's one of public health's greatest contributions from my eyes. I actually look uh, back to those who went before me in the area of nutrition and look with pride at the thought that with the mandatory addition of vitamin D to fluid milk, we wiped out rickets in Canada. I think those kinds of accomplishments need to be heralded and need to be put forward as and recognized as fundamental accomplishments at a population health level. For me, it's easy to answer what public health has contributed most to Canadian society, but it's also one of the most carefully guarded secrets. Essentially, we've given almost 25 years of life expectancy through public health initiatives. It's going back to start of the 20th century, so it's mainly through um, the classic uh, sanitation, vaccination, uh, tobacco control, child maternal health, um, many preventive strategies. Canada has made a tremendous contribution to, the, to public health thinking globally. I can go back and I think of um, what we call the Lalonde Report, which was the start of new, uh, new ways of looking at the creation of health. I think of the Ottawa Charter. I think of Canada's role in promoting the not-for-profit not sector in the development of the Declaration of Alma-Ata which was the call for primary health care in developing countries. And I think traditionally our commitment to international development and laterally to universal childhood immunization. And we have been very strong proponents of making sure that polio is eradicated around the world and that children receive it the minimum, the basic immunization. And a lot has been achieved in there in Canada has played a, a big role both at the global level with World Health Organization in leading some of these programs as well as a community level with our large development community in Canada working on those issues. Je dirais que une des une des grandes réalisations euh, du Québec en santé publique ça a été la création des CLSC, des centres locaux de services communautaires en 1972. Euh, ce, ce sont des centres publics euh, qui dispensent des soins à la fois curatifs et préventifs et, et qui, euh, sont, qui, et, qui euh, initialement, faisaient appel à une large participation de la population. Donc, c'était vraiment le concept de santé communautaire qui a été, qui a été réalisé. Participation de la population, euh, soins préventifs et curatifs et, euh, euh, disons, équipes pluridisciplinaires. Uh, from my own personal perspective, one of the areas, of course, that's close to my heart is the whole issue of water fluoridation. And clearly, um, the science is fairly definitive about this, that it will reduce dental decay by 20 to 40 percent in a population. Now, over the last 60, 70 years in Canada, we really have seen dental disease decrease um, the amount of, of fillings and restorations that people have needed are less and less, which is exactly where we want to go. So I, water fluoridation is an area that has been very strongly supported by the Canadian Public Health Association. They have been um, real Trojans in the um, march to get Canada um, more and more in line with fluoridation policies. And I would see that also as being a very notable and a very valuable area. Il était intéressant de relire notre histoire santé au Canada, écoutez, surtout au 19e siècle. 
n'y a pas deux années, même je vous dirais à toutes les années, il y a une épidémie de choléra, une épidémie de typhus, la tuberculose qui est omniprésente, mortalité infantile catastrophique. Euh, C'est inouï la quantité d'épidémies. Et avec l'augmentation euh, du mieux-être, euh, du niveau de vie, euh, donc vers le milieu des années euh, du, du, du 20e siècle, et des campagnes de vaccination et des dépistages de tuberculose. Il y a eu une amélioration absolument fabuleuse de, de la santé publique au Canada. Um, obviously, HIV has completely changed the face of public health. And I think that public health did right by HIV. It began as a condition that was stigmatized and um, and wholly, wholly disparaged. And because public health said that it is um, a condition that anyone can, can have, that it needs these broad preventive approaches, I think that has changed public health and has changed HIV. Uh, the Canadian Public Health Association is, uh, well, as we know, we're coming up for a hundred, a hundred years of public health in Canada. And there have been profound changes over that time. I've with my 40 years of working experience, I've witnessed the last 40 percent, but I think probably the biggest changes occurred in the first 60 years, when Canada moved from a country where uh, infectious diseases, very serious infectious diseases, were rampant, uh, to almost total control of, of those diseases, and the Canadian Public Health Association was, uh, was a key player in that profound social change. In environmental health, I think our food safety program is one of the absolute best in the world. And having seen other parts of the world and, and seen the condition, there's no questions that, that the contribution of our public health inspectors in terms of food safety and in terms of water safety is, is just one of the best. But I think for me, over time, and currently in particular, the most important uh, thing that public health has done is work to reduce inequities in health. And those inequities still exist. They exist domestically in Canada, and they exist even more on a global level. And uh, I think public health has been able to join with many other movements and social services and others, but you know, not to do it alone, but I think that reducing inequities in health, public health has been the voice for that. It's not an easy argument, and I think that's our most important contribution. Uh, one of the greatest achievements, as far as I'm concerned, I feel really uh, strong about is the fact that we did establish the Public Health Agency of Canada, and we were fortunate enough to establish the first position of a Chief Medical Officer of Health. Now that may not seem, uh, you know, grandiose in a lot of people's eyes, but from my perspective, of being involved in the business a long time, that was a tremendous movement. I think what we've done in smoking has been huge. Uh, and it's not just public health, or it is public health, but in a much broader sense than formal public health. I think, for example, the Non-Smokers' Rights Association has been absolutely fundamental to the, the behavioral change we've seen in Canada, and it's because they, they shifted the debate from the right of smokers to smoke to the right of non-smokers to not be polluted by other people's smoke, and that was such an important shift in social norms. Safe environment. Uh, enhanced immunity and sensible behavior and those three things making the environment safe enhancing immunity by immunizing injections and behaving sensibly were introduced in Canada serially beginning in the late 19th early 20th centuries and gathering momentum through the 20th century until maybe about the final third of the 20th century we began to get really sensible about one of the major public health hazards that we hadn't dealt with before, which was tobacco smoking.